Hi, thank you for watching Digging to China. I'm Dong Xiong. If you have not done so already, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. Today, we'll discuss two significant developments. Firstly, China has been consistently reducing its holdings of US Treasury bonds, with the remaining balance now standing at just $821.8 billion. Secondly, there has been a substantial and unconventional disparity between China's domestic and international gold prices, leading to a surge in domestic gold prices. Why are we discussing these two matters together? Because they both highlight a common issue, a significant outflow of foreign capital from China. For the ordinary people in China, this might imply the imminent implementation of stricter foreign exchange controls. In the future, not only might it be become more challenging to exchange US dollars, but there may also be restrictions on the purchase of gold. The US Department of the Treasury has recently published data regarding foreign holdings of US Treasuries up to July. This report highlights an unusual trend in the behavior of the two major foreign holders of US Treasuries, China and Japan. On one hand, China continues its trend of selling off US Treasuries, reducing its holdings to a mere $821.8 billion, reaching a level not seen since June 2009. Conversely, Japan has been actively increasing its ownership of US Treasuries during the same period. So, is China really actively de-dollarizing its holdings of US Treasuries as the official narrative suggests, or is it compelled to sell them due to capital flight? Some patriotic individuals may believe that China's selling of US Treasuries could spell doom for the United States. Is there any possibility of such an outcome? To put it in perspective, the total size of US Treasuries currently stands at over $33 trillion, while China's government holdings amount to a modest $821.8 billion. To illustrate this, if we were to equate the US population to 330 million people, it would mean that each American owes roughly $100,000. In contrast, the amount owed by the United States to China is merely $2,500, equivalent to just two weeks' worth of wages. China's government holdings represent less than 2.5% of the total, raising the question of whether this scale can truly be considered a substantial leverage capable of significantly impacting the United States. If the Chinese government were to sell off all of its remaining US treasuries, which amount to over $800 billion in a single day, would it have a major impact on the treasury market? To understand this, we can look at the daily trading volumes in the treasury market. Even on a quieter day, there is typically a trading volume of $700 to $800 billion, and during busier periods, it can reach over $10 trillion. Considering the relatively small amount of US treasuries held by the Chinese government, Chinese Communist Party, a sudden sell-off would likely hurt China more than it would significantly disrupt the treasury market. Many of the US treasuries currently held by China have not yet reached their maturity dates, and they were originally purchased when interest rates were relatively low. If China were to decide to sell them prematurely, it would result in a reduction in the market value of these treasuries. To illustrate, if you possessed 100 million $100 million worth of US treasuries, you might only be able to recoup $80 million if you sold them now. Moreover, given that China would need to divert, divest itself over $800 billion in US treasuries within a single day, this rapid sell-off would likely put downward pressure on treasury prices. Therefore, when China initiates the sale of the first $100 billion in treasuries, they might only realize $80 billion in returns. As the selling continues, the returns diminish, and by the time they reach the last $100 billion in treasuries, they might only retrieve $75 billion. These substantial losses would be inevitable. Will the prices of US Treasuries, temporarily lowered by China, bounce back quickly for the United States? Most likely. When China's sell of tantrum ends, the demand for US Treasuries won't be significantly affected by China's action. Soon after, the market should return to balance. 
China's sale of U.S. Treasuries doesn't necessarily encourage other countries to follow suit. Instead, it may offer them an opportunity to acquire Chinese-sold Treasuries at a lower price. So we may wonder about the significance of China's U.S. Treasury sell-off and its impact on the United States. Furthermore, the U.S. still has various strategies to counter China's selling, so China doesn't entirely control the situation. OK, suppose the Chinese government decides to sell off all its U.S. Treasuries at once and end up with a substantial amount of U.S. dollars. How should they handle this situation? If they simply keep the U.S. dollars as cash, it won't yield any returns. They essentially have a few choices to consider. The initial option is to convert the U.S. dollars into different currencies like euros, sterling, yen, or perhaps go all in on Russian rubles. An outcome that would surely bring joy to Putin. The second choice involves investing in other assets within the United States, such as buying shares in American companies. If China were to pour this $800 billion into the U.S. stock market, leading to a substantial surge, wouldn't this act be seen as beneficial to American businesses? Dear China patriotic enthusiasts. The third option is to invest in gold, which is a relatively sensible alternative when considering de-dollarization. However, it's crucial to keep in mind that as long as China is involved in foreign trade, when trading partners request settlements in U.S. dollars, China will need to convert its gold reserves back into dollars before conducting the trade. Therefore, China cannot entirely eliminate its holdings of U.S. dollars. In essence, the notion that China is proactively selling U.S. bonds to de-dollarize is a deceptive political narrative that would be met with skepticism by anyone with even a basic understanding of economics. In reality, the Chinese government's decision to sell U.S. bonds is more out of necessity than choice. Recent months have witnessed a significant outflow of foreign capital from China, and the country faces the challenge of meeting the demand for currency exchange due to this capital flight. Simultaneously, China must maintain stability in the renminbi exchange rate. Moreover, China's trade surplus hasn't been performing as expected in recent times. Consequently, China is rapidly depleting its U.S. dollar reserves, and the U.S. bonds are the most liquid U.S. dollar assets that can be easily sold. Therefore, China finds itself compelled to sell U.S. bonds. It's important to note that they may not necessarily sell U.S. bonds that haven't matured yet, but they are unlikely to renew maturing U.S. bonds. On September 15th, China's State Administration of Foreign Exchange released data showing a deficit of $44.4 billion in foreign receipts and payments for the month of August. This deficit was primarily driven by outflows from the capital and the financial accounts, resulting in a $48.9 billion dollar deficit, the largest since the end of 2015. The significant pace of capital outflows from China has led to the depletion of a substantial portion of the country's foreign exchange reserves, and this trend appears to be difficult to reverse. Domestic funds are still attempting to exit China at an alarming rate, which has compelled China to tighten its foreign exchange controls, some of which have become quite stringent. For instance, reports from Reuters indicates, indicate that Chinese companies within the country needing to exchange more than $50 million must first secure approval from the central bank, effectively restricting the freedom of foreign capital to enter and exit China. Consequently, funds seeking an exit have opted for an alternate path by channeling all domestic funds into the Shanghai gold futures market, leading to a surge in domestic gold prices. This compels the central bank to utilize its gold reserves to stabilize these prices while simultaneously purchasing gold internationally to replenish and close positions. Meanwhile, Wall Street investors have strategically positioned themselves with long positions in the international future market, awaiting the entrance of the Chinese central bank. Consequently, funds unable to exit domestically are recouping their profits through the international gold futures market. 
Consequently, China's recent gold prices have consistently reached new highs in terms of price difference compared to international gold prices. This phenomenon is not solely attributed to domestic investors speculating in gold, but is primarily instigated by foreign capital forces within China that are unable to exit the country. In the past, the People's Bank of China attempted to suppress gold prices by prohibiting banks from importing gold and restricting domestic citizens from engaging in gold futures trading. This approach is akin to the reinforcement of foreign exchange controls. Initially, there were 10 channels for the flow inflow and outflow of capital between domestic and foreign markets, but now only one remains, and there are even plans to close that last channel, effectively cutting off all avenues for fund movement between domestic and foreign markets. In this manner, the Communist Party has absolute control over the renminbi exchange rate, setting it as they wish since there is no free exchange. This renders the exchange rate essentially meaningless. However, these authoritarian measures starkly contrast with the Communist Party's promotion of renminbi inter inter internationalization. How can a currency aiming for global recognition impose such strict controls? Therefore, renminbi internationalization like China's effort to reduce reliance on the dollar appears to be a political slogan without a realistic chance of success. As previously mentioned, the renminbi has been significantly overissued, and this overissuance has left China's foreign exchange reserves inadequate to support the renminbi's exchange rate. Without loosening foreign exchange controls, there is no practical path for the renminbi to achieve genuine internationalization. It's puzzling why Xi Jinping is so committed to the idea of renminbi inter internationalization when, based on current trends, it appears to offer little to no economic benefits to China and may, in fact, worsen the country's foreign exchange outflow issues. These currency swap agreements, aside from increasing the scale of the offshore renminbi market and enabling these nations to convert borrowed funds from China into US dollars for expenditure, don't appear to offer substantial practical advantages to China. Beyond attaining some degree of renminbi international settlement, what has China acquired from them? Nothing. What's the rationale for generating data by consuming dollars only to attain a minimal amount of renminbi settlement volumes? As China's government witnesses a decrease in its US dollars reserves, it is forced to intensify its foreign exchange controls. We may even witness the compulsory termination of currency swap agreements, leading to a gradual reduction in the offshore renminbi market's size. Everything could return to its original state, with the exception that the US dollars in Beijing's pockets have indeed been depleted. What does this signify if not a wasteful expenditure? Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment and subscribe to my channel. Just click the subscribe button right here. I'll see you again shortly. Until then, be well.